he hasn't given us an update. Like I, <laughs> what's say look? What did he say last time? Um, actually, the only update that he's actually given us is just yeah, shops being allowed to, uh, non-essential shops being allowed to open from the fifteenth or whatever. Stay alert. But yeah, aside from that, he told us to stay alert. <laughs> he told us Brexit means Brexit. Can you imagine? A man was able to say Brexit means Brexit, but then stay home and then stay alert. So what means what? Yeah, I don't know. Is it? I, I don't know. He's a clown. You should actually go into comedy. I think he should too. He's actually mm-hmm. really funny. If this I wasn't such it. a... This would be really funny. Yeah. If it wasn't what? If it wasn't such a tragedy, this would be mm-hmm. extremely funny. Oh. Mm-hmm. Extremely. Mm-hmm. But alas. I could see this guy on Have I Got News for you. One of those kind of shows like that. Oh yeah, for sure. Actually see him on it. For sure. Comedian. What is that show again? Huh? What is that show again? Have I got news for you? Oh, this show. So, yeah. Like you know those kind of shows like that. Eight out of ten cats, all those kind of things. You've never watched Have I Got News? <laughs> oh no, Ever. eight out of ten. I've, so, I've watched eight out of ten before. The no, cool I've, British media. I haven't watched Have I, uh, have I Got News for you? Yeah. 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 I think I do miss this thing. Wait, has question time even still been going on? Um, Not that I've seen. I've seen it every now and again, but it's not. I don't think it's as regular as... Yeah. Do you guys actually yeah. watch like TV, like box set TV? Uh, to be honest, that's the only the only things I really watch on TV is either football, uh, football, um, EastEnders. Oh, you see your favorite. Na, 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 na. The, the best show, the greatest show. Na, 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 na. And then, yeah, like. Just like some of these documentaries or whatever. And question time when I'm around to watch it. You're a proper like geezer, lit. aren't you? Question time is lit, man. <laughs> yeah. Geezer, real geezer, watching EastEnders and all that. Of course, EastEnders, you yeah. I thought that died, man. East I thought that died a die. long time ago, too. It can never die. So I'll tell you why it can never die. Oh, here we go. Because every single Christmas, Every single New Year's, <laughs> every single Easter, you guys come back, and you sit down from the screens, and you watch EastEnders. Not as much as... And do you know what's so annoying? Do you know what's so annoying much, about... Not as much back in the day. Not as much as back in the day. No, but you still watch it. You still consume the content around it. You go on Instagram or whatever, and everyone's talking about it like, oh, my days, who's dead? <laughs> but do you know what's so annoying? It's when, okay, yeah, the whole family's around, everyone's around. And obviously, these people haven't watched EastEnders in two years because everyone likes to, everyone that doesn't watch EastEnders likes to brag that they don't watch EastEnders. In. Anyway, they come around, oh yeah, I haven't watched EastEnders in five years. And then five seconds into the thing, they start asking questions. Who's this? What's that? <laughs> Is Ben still Phil's brother? Is Phil still dead? Like, come on, man. Basic stuff. Do you know what my favorite EastEnders um, episode will always be when the Brannings found out about Stacey and Max. That is mm. iconic. EastEnders history right there. Do you know what's even more iconic about it? <laughs> it's the fact that Max had the audacity to try and lie and try and say, Wait, this, <laughs> yeah. this guy tried to say that like it was a joke. It was a joke. <laughs> There's visual footage, there's, there's visual <laughs> evidence, yeah, of you trying to do, not even trying, doing something because your son's mm-hmm. newly wedded wife, yeah, and you're now saying that it's a joke. <laughs> you see how men lie unprovoked? <laughs> unprovoked. Nah, nah. <laughs> unprovoked. There's even evidence a man is still out here talking about, oh, um, it was a joke. What kind of joke is that? What kind of joke? What, wait, what kind of actual joke? Wait, Max is the guy with funny hair, right? Yeah. yeah Ginger, bold, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, Mad oh, Max. I remember my mum always watch uh, Emmerdale on Coronation Street. Oh, yeah, I don't oh. touch those ones. Yeah. <laughs> I've, never t- I've never touched those ones. 
Never? Never. No, never, I, ever. You're missing out. There were a, cute, a few interesting storylines, you know? Yeah. So that means you used to watch it? Yeah, with her. I, I didn't want to like, switch on. Oh, really? Okay. You, you watch, you know when the, the, the other omnibuses, where they do like... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, all, the, all the episodes of the week. <laughs> Mad. Did anyone watch Neighbours? You can't, yeah. Because my grandma did and my dad did. So I, I love Neighbours. I love the theme tune as well. It's actually beautiful. Yeah, yeah it was good. Australia, New Zealand. Yeah. Australia. <laughs> the way you said, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, was prepared, I was getting prepared for an attack. I was like, oh, Australia, okay. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> Diverse over here. Australia. Mm-hmm. King Guru. I've got a good Australian oh. accent. No, please don't. Please, please, please. <laughs> Leave that one alone. Yeah, please, 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 please means we want to hear it. <laughs> Flex, we don't want to hear it. Please nip it in the bud. Yeah. Nice. Oh. King Guru. I'm so I'm so Look back. I can't, I can't believe y'all finally let me pick the topic today. I'm so excited. Are you guys excited? I'm not excited. <laughs> I don't know if this this could go left or it could go right. Well, I don't know, man. I feel like it would go right. Um, there's so many topics that I could have chosen, but I feel like this one, this one was actually based on a discussion on the timeline slash Twitterverse recently. Mm. And um, it, it's not necessarily, I, I mean, we could broaden out the question a little bit more to be encompassing of a lot of other cultures. Mm. But it's basically, to what extent, look at me, I'm even posing that. Ooh, yeah, to what already, extent? Already wow. changed. Hey. To, what, to what extent do Africans that are yeah. born abroad and have you know grown up abroad, they live abroad, to what extent would they be considered African? Like if they were to go back to the motherland, do you think it would be an issue? Like if they don't speak their native language, do you think that is them being less African? Like what do we really mean, I guess, by one being African? And does you living abroad and not knowing your like native language and all that kind of stuff mean that you are any less African? Wow. Hmm. In- oh, interesting. Yeah, Ellie, this is you to kick off, isn't it? Thanks. <laughs> 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 Hmm, but uh, it's actually uh, interesting because last week Sunday um, I was having a conversation with somebody, and because unfortunately a lot of people have a stigma that Congolese people, you know, like to wear Versace clothing every day, <laughs> bright yellow, red, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And because my wait, family... can I quickly just speak? No, on that? no, oh, you can't. No, 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 quickly. No, 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 quickly. I just want to get to the bottom of it. We don't hear no, it. I just want to get to the bottom of it. I'm not, no, listen. Is it like a cultural thing that you guys like want to like look like? I don't know. You just like flashy stuff. It's, it's not only it's not even really only Congolese people that like, kind of do that. If you go to like Asian countries like I don't know like Japan that. and that, they also have that kind of. Thank you. At least you're saying so. the money as it comes. Okay, thank you. Now I'm not getting on to you guys. Like if I was getting on to you guys, I'm talking about the long shoes, you know, the snakes that, that you okay. guys love. It's but enough. you know, it's, enough. it's okay. What is it? Just a cultural thing, like I don't know. Is it? It's the it's. It's the ambiance of the, the country, you know, the people. Ambiance. <laughs> you know, if you know about, if you know about Tapa, you know. Yes, you know. Ellie knows. What's that? I love it. I don't know it's what like, that is. Explain it. It's like um, I don't know if the name probably her. It's actually really funny. Basically, it is. It's definitely a culture thing. It's it's definitely a cultural thing, and I think it also stems a little bit from like colonial slash imperial times, basically the flashier you are, the more like colors and the more like, you know, you are, the more high, highly regarded you are in the community. Um, mm. And it kind of manifested in a very kind of like flashy gentleman's culture, the mm. okay. culture as it were. So 
yeah, it it was very much a like status play type situation. And I've, I've mm. I mean, it manifests like that in Congo. I feel like you get that in all other cultures in some way where you know to in order to kind of like demonstrate your wealth for like your riches mm. or like in part. Um, like for example, I didn't know that in Nigeria, in some communities, you know how some guys have a really like large stomach. That mm. was actually a sign of wealth because they could afford, you know, food. Mm. And I'm, I, <laughs> me, I, I reject that. <laughs> <laughs> I rebuke that one, but you, this is. I used to always wonder, like, why? It, you know, back in the days when I used to watch the Nigerian movies with. Um, mm. My uncles, or aunties, my parents, and think like, why do they take so much pride? Like, just to say the supermarket they're eating. <laughs> I'm thinking, yeah, it means that we got peace for that, you know, we got the money, uh, you know. Well, but even don't good, you want to live good. long? You don't want to live long again. What's living long if you're broke? <laughs> no, I'm joking. That's not my views. Wow. That's not my views. That's, that's, not, my views. that's, <laughs> that's not my views. That's them. That's them. That's them. Hey, okay, cool. I've got a little insight into it. I've got a little insight. Because, yeah, you guys are flashy, boy. You guys are flashy. Hey. But I haven't met one Congolese uncle that is not a designer. Fam. <laughs> but anyway, sorry for interrupting your, you know. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> yeah, I just have to get to the bottom of that. But yeah, that that leads into um the point I was making where I was talking to um this this girl, uh, mm. and she because she we go to the same church and she knows my family and we've known each other for a couple of years, and she made a remark or comment saying that she doesn't think my my family or let's say my parents because we let's say we're the complete they're the complete opposite you know of what a lot of people call typical Congolese you know a flash they're mm-hmm. very down to earth like if you heard my mom speak she's she lost her accent you know uh, very down to earth very uh, very calm uh, but she she said she doesn't know if they are or my family are real, you know, Congolese people, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And I, I did my best to separate <laughs> my feelings from that remark. And, uh, you know, come from a, like an intellectual um, standpoint on that. And I asked her, so what is your idea? You know, mm-hmm. back to, uh, Renee's, what's your idea of... Uh, in this context, Africa and me being African, me being Congolese, or my family being real Congolese. And as she was giving her explanation, et cetera, et cetera, I just kept like backtracking her and highlighting the words that she was using. Like, I think, you know, most do this. And then I was just, I was just saying like, wow, you know, you've actually just developed this construct in your mind and your head, yep. what, normal, what normal is of some people that you're not even a part of. And even if you do say that you know my family, well, then you really don't. Because even <laughs> in countries like first world countries, you know, UK, the US, you have so many different people. So many different people. As many, you know, loud and, um, loud and flamboyant Americans there are out there doing stupidness, you know. Um, there are also ones who are very calm. Isn't Like even with the po- police brutality that's happened in the US. Can't say all police officers, all the cops, you know, are frauds. It's not for me to. It's not for me to say that, and that's not true. But obviously, some people have in their mind that all of them are like that. So I, that was an interesting conversation. At the end of it, I I pretty much said to her, like, you know, feelings aside, I think this is actually a good conversation to have because I think a lot of us have these constructs and ideas, you know, about things. Mm-hmm. That we don't really like give thought to. Mm, good, interesting. So, Ellie, if you were to go back to Congo to live in Congo, would do you feel like you would fit in like naturally, or do you feel like you would still have to kind of adapt to the culture, or do you feel like you know enough of the culture to be able to fit in directly? Um, I definitely have to adapt, man. I mean, 
I'm 24. I ain't been there since I came in 96, <laughs> when I was like one. Um, it's been a long time. And I think my parents didn't really help me because we didn't know this. Um, the, our, our language, Lingala, is very direct and rude. <laughs> but personally, my parents, yeah, they never let me speak, like, speak to them in that, in the, like, that mother tongue growing up because mm-hmm. certain words, there's no way around it. Like, yep. in, English, in English, you can say, oh, come here, please, go there, please, but mm-hmm. you get out, come here, like, in terms of <laughs> that dialect. So yep. if I went back um, on the language basis, it might be a bit, a bit hard. They used to make fun jokes as well. You know, I don't know. If, I think this is just an African thing. It's like they'll laugh at you and say, "Yeah, look at you." You know, uh, if you go back, they're all gonna laugh at you. They're gonna, mm-hmm. oh, okay, like that's <laughs> that's not really helping me out. But mm-hmm. no, it, I think um, it would be, it would be. I wouldn't say struggle, but it would be um, a big turning point. Is that the word? Or a big eye opener, you know, to go back. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I was just, I was just trying to think of myself. I was thinking, if I go back to actually, you know what? Yeah, with night, I feel like it depends where you kind of go because there's places I feel like I'm trying to start to try to adopt like a kind of Western culture in terms of whether whether it's content that they're consuming, whether it's the fashion, the music, the style, everything. Yeah, like I feel like the more affluent the more rich sides are trying to kind of adopt a western kind of um a western way of living but now if you were to throw me into i don't know like <laughs> if you were to throw me into the sticks i don't the know if i'll be able to village. survive i don't know if i'll be able to survive because there's there's aside from like even just the cultural aspects like the physical things that we that that we can actually see there's also like mentality. There's also there's there's a there's a whole load of intangible things as well that I feel like I would have to adopt or learn. You get yeah. what I'm saying. But, hmm. Going back to your question. In fact, I need to even hear this question again <laughs> because <laughs> it's a yeah, it's a tricky one. It's one that I have been mulling over for the past like few days because yeah, like if you were born abroad. Or if you have mm. African heritage, to yeah. what extent you'll be considered African? And for me, it's a difficult question because, like, from a personal experience, being somebody that is African but also half two countries, it feels like, can I really call one home over the other? So it's not even like a direct thing of, like, oh, me going back home, but it's like, okay, but where and which one and for what reasons? And mm. then for people that are a little bit further down the line that are maybe like third or fourth generation that are a little bit more divorced from their home culture and then thinking about other diasporas like african-americans for example um Mm. i was chatting with a couple of my friends who are african-american but when you know when you ask them where they're from they're from brooklyn and that's very much down to like their their own cultural and historical experiences to what extent can they I guess, re-assimilate back into whatever their, you know, home culture was, if they can even pinpoint their home. So I think it's difficult because there's so many different stages of separation as well to take into account. I think for a lot of like Black Brits, because we are second or third generation, we still have some semblance of the culture, right? We still eat the food. We can still hear the language sometimes. Um, Even if we were to go back, there are still certain similarities that are not like completely foreign to us. But then... Mm. I wonder, like, as we get older, if we don't, like, migrate back home, if we have families here, and there's a lot more kind of, like, separation, because naturally with each generation, the culture becomes a little bit less strong. Um, Will Black British or African British or whatever we will be become, will they still have the same strength to their african heritage slash tie could they still be considered an african citizen or not mm. that's an interesting question interesting because um even because my mom she she said something 
a while ago that today I still remember. She said, it's quite a bold statement as well. Some might agree, some might not agree, but <laughs> us that predominantly live, you know, let's say in the UK, London or first world countries. Mm. Um, she said, that is where you're from, mm. but where your home is. And it kind of hit me because like, wow, even when she went back after a while, she was, she even said that, you know, it was, it was a big eye opener. Like a lot has changed, et cetera, et cetera. But mm. even when you do go, let's say if you actually go back, you know, you always want to come back here. So I don't know, it's a bit of a, a push and pull where yeah. is here your home? Okay, we're from there, but I don't know. I'm, I don't want to, I want to see what you guys think in that term. <laughs> Is, is, your home London? is your home the UK? Or is, it, is that just where you're from? Is it both? Is it? I think there's, there's a home and there's a home, you know. <laughs> <laughs> because, like you said, um, I feel like even if I was to go back home and settle down there, I would still be attached to all things London culture culture in particular mm. as well because that's where I've grown up and that's where I've had the majority of my life experiences so I'll still always have that that attachment but I do get it at the same time as well because for me I would still say that Africa is my home because I still have a connection there like there's family members there is my parents speak the speak your both speak your but um like Nigeria is always a topic of conversation in my house so I don't forget I, I won't forget where I'm from I won't forget where my parents are, are from I will never forget that kind of stuff but then it's interesting to think down the line because obviously I feel like my my um my understanding of the culture is watered down from theirs. So then my kids as well, mm. it's probably going to be even watered down further. And so it's going to be interesting to see like in what, five, six generations down from me, are they, <laughs> are they going to have a sense of understanding of the African culture or where they are actually from, where they originated from? Or is it going to be similar to, like you were saying, when they, like similar to the States over in the States where I don't feel mm. like, Majority of, the, well, majority of these people do not even actually understand and realize that they were actually from Africa. Once upon a You'd time. be surprised though. I feel like with America, it's a bit complicated because what I didn't realize is how many of so you've got um, African Americans, right, who were descendants from the enslaved populations, but then there's also yeah. a really like thriving community of um, like Africans that are second generation Americans, so like Nigerian mm. Americans and Ghanaian Americans who their parents you know migrated to the U.S. relatively recently and then you've got Caribbean Americans right so you've got Haitians and um, mm. Dominicans and all sorts of kind of like Caribbean countries who have also recently migrated so you've got Caribbean Americans and it's really it's this really like interesting melting pot of different cultures that have been yeah. encapsulated and have like differing levels of distance from a particular culture like for Caribbean Americans it's so so interesting because it's like you also were you know descendants from a slave population abroad and then now migrating to the U.S. you are now like a bit divorced from that culture that sprung up as a result of kind of migration from Africa so that was just like wow mind-boggling and then for Nigerian Americans who I would say are very very similar to um, British um, African migrants in the sense that there's very it's very similar how like their culture has transmitted down the generations so um, we've got basically this almost like it's almost identical like I, I had the most synergy with like either Africans from the continent or African Americans that were like second generation Africans so I thought that was pretty cool um and I feel like there's also other things to consider because especially in the UK, there's a lot of like intermarrying of African countries and like Caribbean com like communities and stuff. Like it's not weird to see 
you know, someone that's like black British, but they're like half Jamaican and half Nigerian, for example, or, you know, half Ghanaian, half Congolese. So what does that, like, how does that also impact how that culture is going to be transmitted? Because it's like, it's not even just the, it's going to be watered down, but now you have like two or three competing like African countries that are like mm. within one person. How do you pass down the cultures? Mm. Like Shagan, if tomorrow you are going to marry somebody that was um, Ghanaian, <laughs> for example. Yeah. Who's Jollof Rice is going to pass down? Why is, why is he we fold, we, we fold out Ghani and Jalof in the bin. We fold out in the bin. There's only one There's only one way to deal with that. That, that, that one goes in the bin. I cook the Jalof, you know? Can you imagine? <laughs> but yeah, mm, that's, 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 a, that's interesting. Because like, thinking about it, I feel like that can kind of relate to some countries in the Western world as well, where... I feel like they have kind of even even thinking about the UK as well, because there's a lot yeah. of people that would say maybe they're English, but their ancestors um, originated in Ireland mm, or maybe sure. Scotland, and these were all separate countries at one point as well. It wasn't one United Kingdom, but they've all kind of become intertwined. But it's weird. I feel like in each country. Even in the even in the union, I feel like there is still they still kind of do have an identity. Like whether it's Wales, they've still got the language. Whether it's Ireland, they're still. Or should I actually let me let me just say Northern Ireland? Actually, let me not speak for Northern Ireland because that's <laughs> <laughs> let me just leave let me just leave Northern Ireland. But um, even Scotland as well, they still got some traditional thing. Whether it's like the food, the haggis, and all of that kind of stuff, or like the the kilts and the bagpipes and all those kind of things that we kind of associate with them but then mm. it's still when I look at it it's still like they all kind of just merged so I'm just trying to feel like think like in a couple of years is Africa even going to be like that itself like where there's just a merge what, what do you mean like, exactly a merge? a merge of just different cultures I feel like in each country you still might still have your like you have some 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 things that we can associate with each nation yeah. but mm. as a whole like i feel like it's just gonna become a, a mixture like in terms of the whole continent as a whole i feel like it's just gonna become a mixture of just different like cultures if mm. you get what i'm saying so like that. less identifiable from less identifiable less identifiable Mm. Yeah. I think that's true. Also, like just using Nigeria as uh, Nigeria as an example, the fact that like one in six Africans across the like globe is Nigerian. Chances are they're probably going to you know settle down in all of these different places. I think there's going to be like a lot of people that have Nigerian heritage. Like even when we think about Jamaicans, for example, or um, a lot of African Americans that have like when they trace their ancestry back there's a lot like a high percentage that are Nigerian um, mm. even looking at like Afro-Latinas a lot of them have an overwhelming amount of Nigerian in their ancestry so I th- I wouldn't be surprised to see like just a lot of like mixed diasporas pro- like propping up where people have the heritage but they're Mixing, mixing and matching and also globalization yeah. the fact that you know people can travel more people can settle down a lot more like i don't even think it's something that will happen with africa but just across the across the globe we're going to see a lot of more kind of like interesting mixes of types of people which is pretty cool mm. so would it be right to call it uh a possible dilution that will take place down yeah lines? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't use the word dilution though, because that could yeah. some people will try. And <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Be like, yeah, pe- people are gonna take trying to take that the wrong way, but we hear what you mean. Mm. Um, and what do you guys think about like the problem of language? Because I was on the TL recently, and the comparison was actually made between um, a-, a good friend of mine actually made the comparison between a lot of like 
Congolese diaspora versus like Nigerian diaspora and how most of the Congolese diaspora that he's come across actually know how to speak Lingala where there's a lot of um, Nigerian diaspora that don't know their mother tongue and yeah. I th- personally I think that's down to the fact that we have very distinguished like histories and also just comparing Congo and Nigeria Nigeria is huge like people really underestimate just how mm-hmm. big Nigeria is it's literally like like Nigerians could make up a good six or seven countries the amount mm-hmm. that there is and in terms of like empires and stuff, the British Empire just had so much more sway on the imperial like so landscape. Is that, is that in terms yeah. of population or um, the size of the country itself? Oh, population. 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 Because when they made Nigeria, like when the UK made Nigeria, it was literally just they took all of the neighboring like ethnicities and merged <laughs> them to become one country. Um, but yeah. That I say all of that to say, what do you guys think about the fact that, like, like what, what importance do you put on native language as being a part of, you know, the African's identity? It's major. <laughs> um, yeah, major. I think language is, um, is the thing that connects us all, isn't it? Whether you speak English or uh, French, Italian, Spanish. So in terms of where you're from, your background, yeah, language is a major thing. It's a, it's a real major thing. Because it's like, if you don't know it, maybe if you, okay, maybe you don't, if you don't know it or you don't speak it or whatnot, there's a, there's a bit of a disconnect, if that makes sense. Mm. Like, you know where you come from, but because language is just so vital, I mean, you can't be in England, you know, have a British passport, but not be able to speak English. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. So in terms of the culture you're from, it plays, it plays a major part, definitely, 100%. Yeah, I agree, I agree with that as well. You think about it like, yeah, like Ellie was saying, that is the, I feel that's even probably one of the biggest um, factors to consider when you're talking about even culture, everything is language, because, um, the whole culture stemmed from being able to communicate with each other. So if there was no communication, I don't think there would even be a culture. So language is probably actually even the most important factor. But then does that mean that I can now, I should now say somebody that cannot speak a specific language is not from, so let's say someone from Nigeria, like am I, am I entitled to say someone that can't speak, let's say Yoruba, someone, let's say their parents mm. from one of your mm. tribes, yeah. They, them not being able to speak Yoruba means that they are not African or they're not real African. I don't know. I don't think, I don't think there's, you can really even judge it, but mm. it's a bit of a techie one. Techie. Because in a way, I do still believe, I, I still think like, if you don't, if you cannot, if you don't, if if you can't speak the language, you can't understand it. So what are you actually holding on to? Like, what is what is your claim to that culture? Mm, it's weird. I don't know. Mm, I, I, mm. I think it, it comes down a lot to uh, how much the person wants to know as well, I guess. Yeah. If you're talking about language, you can't go most of your life not wanting to know or find out. If you don't even understand it, mm. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. I feel like there's many things to unpack here. First of all, I think I agree that language is super important in terms of like your ties to a particular community or heritage. Although I don't think it's the prevailing one because there's also a class thing when we're talking about language, not just an ethnic and a cultural thing where we've got a number of people who are, you know, within the upper classes in these communities slash back home that actually don't speak native languages. So Nigeria is a great example where, you know, I've got a lot of friends that are born and raised in Nigeria, like born, raised, all of that. And they don't speak Yoruba, they don't speak Ibo, they don't speak um, Hausa, they don't speak Edo. Um, I think less so with Congolese people that I, I've been like I've engaged with but 
there are actually people that I know that are really good friends of mine that don't speak their language, but for all intents and purposes are definitely like, I wouldn't even doubt their Nigerian-ness. It's a bit of a, oh, like you don't speak, or you're, you live in, but they still have a very, very strong claim to their heritage. So I think it's a sticky one because I think language is important, but I still think you're like, you can, I wouldn't question someone's heritage based on their capacity to speak their native language. And I think it's tight because we're also still dealing with the effects of colonialism in that a lot of people's capacity to speak their language was actually affected by colonial migration patterns. And like speaking from even experience in terms of the hesitancy of my parents to teach me Eva Lingala or Ibo, the fact that these kind of languages weren't rewarded both back home but also in England meant that it's kind of like when you want to give your child the best I guess chance in life because English is a universal language in that it's globally respected it's one of those ones where if you don't speak English it's kind of like okay mm. even like Frenchies for example Frenchies are a lot of them are bilingual Spanish people a lot of them are bilingual so it's not even just a case of like oh if you can't speak your native language but it's also a power play like a global power play where there are certain languages that are affording you a lot more opportunities and rewards on a global scale as opposed to your native language. So uh, it's a tough one. It's, it's really tough. So I, I was going to um, uh, interrupt you uh, before. How does that work? They, they grew up born and raised, but they don't understand it as well. I mean, they right. can hear it a little bit, but they don't, like, they don't speak it. Up until like, what age? They're just curious. There isn't uh, up until any age. They just don't speak it. Like at home and stuff, like they, don't, they speak English. I mean, in terms of understanding. Oh, like, I mean, their understanding is there. There isn't a particular age that you like. Okay, okay. Off, but okay. Definitely don't speak it. Okay, fair enough. And they have the accent as well, which is strange. Like, they have, you oh. can hear that. Yeah, yeah, you can hear that. They're Nigerian. Oh, yeah. but, yeah. huh. <laughs> so, what other factors would you say? Um, plays a role in determining someone's heritage other than, other than your parents being from that country what were factors um, I would say um, how close you are to the issues affecting that country um, so if you are gonna be talking about like Nigeria I would expect you to have some degree of closeness to the issues that are affecting Nigeria um, some kind of knowledge about the history of those communities there. I think a lot of like, particularly like diasporic communities like Black British Nigerians or, you know, Black British Congolese people, a lot of us will claim, oh, you know, we're Nigerian, we're Congolese, but we actually just don't, like we have no knowledge of what's occurred there. And it's even more interesting because we don't understand how our Westernization actually impacts, you know, home when we go there. Um, so actually having an understanding of like your history as well, um, partaking in the culture so you know even things as basic as like recipes of how to cook and you know how to dress and certain cultural elements that we have and we keep in our lives even basic like cultural stuff like the fact in that for a lot of you know Yoruba communities y'all like to bow and and be doing all that um respect and, and respect <laughs> no, I appreciate that. I hear that. I hear that. I hear that still. Um, I remember yeah, I like to be doing... back in school. Huh? <laughs> back in school, they'd be like, they'd sweep, your, sweep your foot or something. <laughs> <laughs> All that kind of stuff. Um, also, I think an element comes when you're challenged. So I don't know if you guys have been looking at the NS10 v10 um, sound clash situation, yeah? But when WizKid was versing um, Vibes Cartel, Nigerians across the world united against the common enemy and said, listen, I don't care if you were born in flipping Mexico. If you're Nigerian, you're coming over here to vote for WizKid. So the yeah. presence of some kind of like external entity is when like, a lot of communities will be like, you know what, let's forget about our internal divides. We're all one country. We have a common enemy that needs to be taken out. Let's unite against them and take them down first. Mm. <laughs> um, 
so yeah that's what i would say food definitely um cultural awareness and understanding um yeah i was gonna say so do you think there's any extent into which someone would would be classed as like not african or not nigerian or whatever Yes. I mean, if yes. why you definitely not Nigerian? Why you hey. absolutely not? Absolutely not. Why have you been, why have you been living there? Indian slash, you know, Indian people that live in the Caribbean, and for all intents and purposes, they believe that they are Caribbean. So, yeah. at what point does? Because it's it's different. There's a distinction between your nationality and your ethnicity. Your nationality yeah. is where. You know, I'm a patriot. I'm, you know, I'm, hey, I'm British. But then your ethnicity is that, you know, I'm Nigerian or, you know, I'm black. Um, well, a lot of people get ethnicity and race mixed up, but that's a whole other conversation. But your ethnicity is, oh, I'm, my heritage is from Nigeria or that kind of stuff. So at what point does it become acceptable for you to accept your nationality as your identity? So at what point do you? Does somebody that is British Nigerian become um, British, or somebody that is white and that has moved to Nigeria and has family that has lived in Nigeria for hundreds of years but is not African of African heritage? When do they become Nigerian, or do they ever become I Nigerian? I feel like they can because that that would be a bit mad. Imagine if all you've ever known or ever, all you ever knew is was Nigeria, all your, your family is there, mm. but people are telling you that you cannot claim, you can't claim this heritage based on your colour or based on, yeah, based on based on the fact that you're white and you're not black, like the people, the original people that were there. I don't feel like you could do that because that would, that's, whew, that's, a, that's a bit, that's, hmm. It's a bit of a tongue to Because, say. yeah, you can, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. because then that's the argument for us as well like if yeah. someone was to come and tell me that I'm not British I'll just be like what, what do you mean I was, I I'm born here I know the code we get, we get all of these anti-immigrant movements where we've got people that are like go back to your country even though for all intents and purposes you could have been living in Britain like your whole family look at for example yeah. Caribbeans who actually came a lot more of them came before a lot of Africans migrated to the UK, right? Since like the 1940s. Yeah. Their communities have yeah. been in Britain for a good like 80 plus years now. Yeah. And still people are telling them to go back home. To where? <laughs> and some people would this year. And the thing is like, I don't know if you guys know about um, Cashtastic, for example. Yeah. Man was born and raised in Britain and they deported him to Jamaica. It, it, it doesn't make sense. Are you talking about That's just a madness. the recent deportation? No, mm-hmm. one guy was an artist. He, he just came back to the country last year. Was it? Yeah, imagine. last year. And he came back. That was gone for like, how many years? Probably like... Years. Years, yes. Five, six, seven years. Something like that. Huh. That's mental, you know. It's, it's, it's crazy when you think about it. When you think about it like that. Not in the country that you were born and you were raised in. Born and raised. <laughs> Not even they just deported born, you, you were raised. They deported you back to Jamaica as if, say, you're... What? And, I mean, he thrived there. His skin was looking great. He was taking <laughs> up the culture and all that, that kind of stuff. But... What? Mad. Was that Ther- that was Theresa May, isn't it? Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, man. Yeah. No, but I was gonna say I think um, soldier. It's a bit. It's about there, but I think from a soldiers soldiers perspective, they soldiers kinda, military man. Yeah, they kind of get because I just remembered in a song called "Welcome <laughs> to America." Um, soldier boy. <laughs> that's what I thought I was like if I say something I'm about to say how is this guy going to link Soldier Boy into this oh, no hey, listen hey, listen man <laughs> you're not going on that run again yeah I was like you're yeah. about to 
in the phone and all them things. They was like, no. Oh, <laughs> hey. Oh, oh. oh man. <laughs> oh. Can I talk? Can I talk? Go on, go on, go on. Say it. Man, land your plane. Yeah. Don't worry. No, no funny analogies, yeah? Straight to the point. Yeah, okay. Straight to okay. the point. Lovely. So, I just remembered um, in a song called Welcome to America, uh, in one of the verses, it gives the perspective of a soldier who has come from a different country and he's fought for the country, et cetera, et cetera, but he's not able to identify himself, you know, identify himself in terms of his nationality in the mm. country. So that, that example was the US. Um, mm. where people don't respect him and kind of like you guys are speaking about. Um, he, they, he just not accepted. It's like what you guys are saying, go back to your country or you don't really belong here. You know, even though yeah. that you fought for us, you know, X, Y, and Z. It's like, even though you'll come, no matter what you do, you won't be accepted here. Yeah. yeah. The second thing I was going to say before I forget was that I think, I think it is possible to an extent to have um, the dual nationality where that it becomes your that becomes something um, that you identify yourself with. I think that's possible. Um, I don't think you should have to choose in most cases. You know, you can be British and Nigerian, British and African. Um, yeah, I don't think you should have to choose. You can. Oh. <laughs> this guy is triggering, <laughs> triggering me, you know. <laughs> it's actually triggering me. <laughs> hey, nah. But yeah, no, I do agree. I do agree. I don't feel like you can you can say somebody is not of this nationality if the person that one if the person is living in a country, they are abiding by the rules and the regulations of that country, that nation. The person has, I don't feel like you even need to even have family there. If now I was to go and live in, in, in Japan, if now I was to go and live in Japan I'm and I was there that. for like what, 10 years, I've, I've, I've yeah. absorbed the culture. I'm, I'm one with the people. One with the people? I think I'm one with the people. In Japan, black guy. I think that would be kind of mad. Yeah, come on. I feel like it would, it would be kind of mad for someone to come and now tell me that, oh, yeah. Like, I'm not of this culture, or I don't understand this culture. Who are you to tell me that? Mm. You, can't, you, can't, you can't tell me that. But then again, from another perspective, do you not think that ex- ex- acceptance plays a big role in that? Because let's say you go to Japan, and predominantly, you're getting a lot of um, racist attitudes from people, even though you've mm. lived there for X amount of years. Wouldn't you yeah. feel to a certain capacity that you don't belong there, that, that you can never assume that as your identity? I would, I would, I would, 100%. But then I wouldn't stay in a place that I feel that I, I don't feel accepted in. I wouldn't stay there anyway. I don't feel like there's a lot of people that stay in places that they don't totally feel accepted. If I'm going there and I'm seeing blatant out-and-out racism towards me, I'm not staying in that country. I know there are some people that would stay there based on whatever circumstance, whether it's work or whatever kind of stuff. But mm. I think I think to counteract the best, the best example is uh, obviously states in America, where the states certain oh Renee's joining again. Um, certain it's states frozen. Have, have it was frozen. Hey, yeah, screenshot her, her twins joined. Yeah, this is oh, cool. oh. like Sorry, my, my phone actually. <laughs> <laughs> let me see. Hold on, let me see if I can. Uh... Hey, this is fun. Come and see two This is what I like to see. This is what I don't like to see. Where were we? Yeah, so I was saying, um, yeah, Shagan. So you said that you wouldn't stay in that kind of environment when I said like. Mm. Um, does acceptance have a part to play about you, uh, you know, uh, making yourself identified by that nationality? And then I gave you the example of how about, you know, living in those states in America 
where you're not accepted because of your your ethnicity, your ethnicity, you know, your background, etc. Do you stay in that kind of environment? Is that the same thing? No. Me personally, I will not stay in any environment where I don't. Oh, feel... He's out. He's out. <laughs> I don't. I won't stay in. Any... I'm not there. I'm not there for that. <laughs> Come on, mate. What if you don't have um, a choice? That's me personally. I'm just saying personally. I know there's some people that would stay based on certain circumstances, whether it might be a high paying job or I don't know, for there's different reasons. But me personally, I am out. Oh. You think I'm staying in somewhere? Listen, I had an experience here. Yeah. I went to Germany last year. I had an experience there yeah, in Berlin. <laughs> Berlin will never see my face again. Berlin is not seeing my face again. They will not, they will not, I will not, I'm not spending no euros there. I'm not spending nothing there. I'm not, in, I'm not they, bringing anything to the continent. <laughs> that's my personal, that's my personal thing. I'm not saying that other people shouldn't go. Girl, you might have a different experience. But for me personally, I'm not staying somewhere where I'm not accepted. Mm. So then because of that, do you, do you say that it's not possible then to be identified as being from there? For you, yeah, I feel like it's not, it's not in, in. Um, I think it's not, it's not people's entitlement to be able to say whether you are, you are from a place or not, or whether you are of this culture or not. You within yourself would know if you know enough about the culture. If you, if you've, um, if you've added value to the to the culture, if you've if you participated in, in, in the different aspects of the culture, I feel like you are entitled within yourself to, to, to say that, yeah, you're of this culture. But I, I don't feel like you can give that power to someone else to be able to say this person is not of this culture. So it's your own, it's your own merit, is that what you're saying? It's, it's your own merit, but at the same time, you have to kind of... You have to work for that merit. I'm not going to... I don't want to say, yeah, like, you have to work to be accepted, like, because I'm still not trying to give it into people's hands for, for, for a person to be able to come and say, yeah, like, this person is not of this culture, because that's, that's a bit mad. That's a similar thing. That's a similar, similar thing here. There's people here in this country, but because um, we are of a different, a different race, they would say that, yeah, we shouldn't be here just down to our race, but I've contributed more to this this your con your country than you have. So who, how can you now come and tell me that I'm not I shouldn't I, I I'm not entitled to say that I'm yeah I'm of this place. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I feel like there is acceptance to an extent, but at the same time I don't feel like that should be the overriding like rule. Like you have to be accepted by someone to for you to be able to claim to mm -hmm. claim that you're of this place. <laughs> what, 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 what's, that? what's that? What's that? I got a point. I got a point. I got a point. She's spraying the disinfectant <laughs> against the code. Is that you put? Is that is that you put your hands up in? I don't know. Yeah, it's taught in a minute. Primary school, yeah. <laughs> she's taught no. Is it? Yeah, it's is different. It, you, yes, it doesn't seem urgent. You have to do. Hello. <laughs> I thought it's just whoever can put their hand up at the highest. That's yeah, how we did it. That's unfair, unfair for people to do hands. Yeah, then you stand up. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> point. I feel like, Shagan, I actually think you have a point insofar as I think there should be some element of a person being able to decide what culture they identify as. But I think it's a very, it's a very slippery slope. I mean, we've had conversations right like now within Black culture about accepting you know, non-black people or non-black communities that are participants of black culture, as it were, that are actively profiting off, you know, their closeness to black culture. Mm. I think mm, it's very tough because would that, would you have a similar vein of thinking if someone decided that, you know, there. Go on, let it out. It's unscripted. Come on. Yo, it's it's <laughs> tough, boys. Let it out. Let it out. 
<laughs> I don't know how many of you guys know about political blackness in like the 1960s, but basically, non black communities would call themselves politically black um, to align themselves, because to align themselves to blackness first and foremost, because blackness was seen as not just race, but also the forefront of marginalization, right? Mm. Do you, like, to what extent can one then say, someone that is non-black for example yeah say, i'm part of like you know black twitter or black culture or <laughs> you know uh it's it's so weird because i was actually thinking about um it's weird but then it's... asking that question that means that you are a credit in am i no. frozen yeah, a little bit, but it's, it's fine now. You guys are frozen for a second. Yeah. <laughs> is, oh, it, is, is it internet? Is it? <laughs> Eddie, I think it's you. Nah, mate. It's not me. It's, it's <laughs> affecting crazy, everyone. How could it just be me? <laughs> it's crazy, man. Listen, <laughs> you, you know, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew I was coming. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm gonna have a Croydon banner next time. Oh no! Yeah. No, no, don't do that. That's a nice. That's a nice. I see nice blue skies over there in yeah. the background in the through nice, the window. Nice area, yeah, yeah. Nice. You guys are almost black. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You guys, the sun hasn't. Has the sun even? <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. I'm never gonna say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything. Cause that hair is getting dark. There, it looks bright. <laughs> We're closer to the sun here. Is oh, it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are. <laughs> they are. But yeah, what was I saying? Um, um, what was the next thing again? Uh, I think but, I'm going to get um, it. And um, <laughs> would you basically, uh, if, if someone came into your space? If someone came into my space? That's what I before, I was saying like, I don't feel like you. Sh- I don't feel like it's it's for the person within the culture to say yeah whether this person is accepted or not. I feel like that is to it. It still does play a factor as well. I don't think someone can invite themselves into a culture and mm. kind of just try and take ownership of it or try and say that yeah they're of the culture without earning some stripes. If you get what mm. I'm saying. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I feel like eesh. you should have just left that the, the before the but. Just, just <laughs> keep it there. Yeah, ah. yeah. Let me let me just leave that there, innit? Now, do you know what? Yeah, I think I I personally <laughs> think it's it's a bit more straightforward. I think you know the classic catchphrase of um, catchphrase slogan, what you want to call it, blood is thicker than water. I personally think that even as I think one of you said, even if you're from, let's say. You're from the UK. If you're not doing enough, you're not doing anything for UK, um, and yeah. let's say you're doing more harm than good. Uh, to an extent, obviously you're born, you're born in that you know geographical space, but you're not really, you're not really British if that makes sense. What? It's like, yeah. it's like you know, hmm. you you built this, you've built this empire with people around you. Somebody joins, they haven't done anything, they haven't contributed in any way, and they say, Yeah, they start celebrating with the trophy. It, 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 it doesn't make sense it, to me. What? Like, How like, dare you deny my Englishness? What? <laughs> <Damn no. laughs> Wait, what did you say? Englishness? Yeah, yeah. okay. So that yeah. If I didn't contribute anything to Britishness, I think, I don't know. I think it's more, personally, I think it's more than just contribution, but also participation. It's a big, it's like, a big factor, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. it's the same thing. No, it's the same thing. I think it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Participation, the same thing. I mean, there's some think, people, oh. couple things, couple things. I think there's some people out here that will, for example, like, they hate the UK, but make no mistake, they're English or, you know, they're British. They will, listen, they will run, right, like, run train on Queen Victoria and then Mandela. But mm. make no mistake, they belong to nowhere else. <laughs> They're yeah. from here. And I think 
to understanding the earlier question that um, I posed to you guys, I think Shagun answered really well was the experience part and why some people can claim a nationality, but they can't claim something like blackness because blackness is a very specific experience that not everybody will have the capacity to actually engage in. Whereas something like nationality, the markers of nationality are a lot easier to participate in. Mm-hmm. When you're black, by very definition of you, you know, being racialized as someone that's black, so having the dark skin, having, you know, the heritage and stuff like that, that experience is something that you cannot easily co-opt in. Do you get yeah. Like it's experience that somebody that's non-black will just not have whereas if you're somebody that's like oh i want to be like i want to participate in this like national identity like i want to eventually become american or and british that's a lot easier to do because the borders around that experience aren't as closed off and as specific as the black experience for example like i just feel like they're too yeah if that made sense hmm. I think, I guess it's getting into the grey area again. (laughs) (laughs) I think if you're talking about, you know, in that context, it's a bit, if, for example, let's say, um, I want, I introduce myself to the Asian community and I want to get myself involved, you know. (laughs) Hey, Hey, just an example. (laughs) Relax, relax, relax. relax, relax. (laughs) And I want to, you know, I want to delve into it. I want to throw myself into it. I want to be involved in it, you know? Mm. Then, wow. Even I don't know what to say after that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing as well. I feel like we do kind of need to establish what the community is. Because, like, what is, what is the, what, what would you say is the black community over here? Are we talking about, like, are we talking about London culture? Are we talking about... Because um, it's weird. I'm thinking about it when we talk black com- black community. is I don't know. What are the boundaries? What what are we talking about when we talk about this community? What exactly is it? No, we don't have... We don't is, have it just, is it just the that. race? Or is it just that we're sharing a common struggle? It, I think it, it seems like it's the race is the main thing. I agree. I agree. 